Hey guys, it's Darwin, here today to talk about the differences between through hiking solo and through hiking with a group. Alright, so let me first start off by saying there's this big misconception that whenever you go to do a through hike, uh, like the Appalachian Trail, that you're going to be out on the trail for four to six months completely by yourself, trapped in this beautiful nature landscape where you're going to connect with yourself and find out who you are, um, being completely alone with your thoughts. And the reality of it is it's not true. There are so many people that do long distance trails, especially trails like the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail, that it's pretty rare that you're alone. There might be a couple times throughout the day while you're hiking that you can be alone with your thoughts. But for the most part, in the morning when you wake up, at night when you're at camp, and even whenever you stop to take breaks during the day, that you're gonna be running into a lot of other hikers. So I've seen a lot of questions and concerns on Facebook about am I gonna be hiking solo and being by myself or will I be able to be around other people? So there's obviously the question that comes up, do I want to be a solo hiker and experience this trail by myself or do I wanna be in a group like a tramley? A tramley is a trail family. It's the people that maybe you meet the first couple of nights that you're out and then you tend to hike with every day. Uh, it might not even be hiking with them throughout the day, but at least you start out at the same place end at the same place. They become the people that you kind of hang out with every day. They become your family. So I wanted to talk about the pros and the cons of having a tramley versus hiking solo. So in 2015, when Snuggles and I set out to hike the Appalachian Trail, you know, we had this thought that we we're going to be out there as a couple for four to six months completely alone and hiking together. Um, we were actually really looking forward to the opportunity of doing that because we hadn't really been together um, since we've been married that long um, with each other for four to six months every single day. So we were kind of looking forward to that. Uh, to our surprise, it didn't work out that way. We ended up meeting a couple cats the first night we were out and we ended up hiking a lot of miles with them. One of the guys in particular named Rube, we hiked over 1,300 miles with, so he became really, really close with us. And, uh, you know, having a tramway was really amazing for us. So I think one of the number one pros of hiking with a group or a tramway is community. Um, while you're out there, you know, you're, you're putting yourself through a lot of stress, not only physical stress, but mental stress of it's hard, I'm wet, I'm cold. So having that community and some other hikers to lean against um, at the end of a bad day or during a bad day is really, really important. You can connect with those people and you can swap stories, and kind of let out your stress and frustration and worries and, and you know, they, they help lift you up and make you feel better. So that's a really, really positive thing about hiking with a tramley. And I would say the other pro about hiking with a group are making miles. You know, if you find a, a certain person that you hike with every day and you're hiking about the same pace, it helps blow away those miles. So if you're doing like a 15 to 20 mile day and you know it's gonna be a hard day, it's pouring down rain or it's cold, it helps pass the time and let that hike go on faster and get you to camp faster whenever you have someone to share it with. And then kind of a goofy one, but very true, when you're hiking with a group, it's easier to get hotel rooms. So sometimes whenever you come into a trail town, there's the option of staying in a bunk at a hostel, but there's also some cheap hotels along the trail. So hiking with a group allows you to take a hotel room that's say maybe $80 and split it between four to six people that you're hiking with. Some people are sleeping in beds, some people are sleeping on the floor, but it kind of gives you a little bit more of a personal experience than staying in a hostel with a bunch of other hikers that you don't really know. So a lot of times in 2015, Snuggles and I would stay in a lot of hotels for the simple fact that we had other hikers to split a room with. So it made it much easier and much cheaper in the long run. So some of the cons of hiking with a tramley are number one, you're not really on your own schedule. So if you're hiking with other people, 
kind of at the beginning of the day, you're all discussing, well, what type of mileage are we gonna put in today? And you know, there might be some people in your group that wanna hike longer miles than you do. So it's kind of this collaboration and this community where you have to decide, am I gonna hike less miles than I want to, or am I gonna hike more miles? So that is one con of hiking with a tramway. You're not really necessarily hiking your own hike, as the term goes. Um, you're kind of hiking as a group and making decisions as a group. And that's also true with staying in a town. You know, there's some of the times where, I'm glad we did now, but there were some towns that Snuggles and I never planned on staying in, hostels and hotels that we never planned on staying at, but because the group that we were hiking with wanted to, we ended up doing it anyways. Now, those were much needed Nero and Zero days that we needed to take anyways, but there were some of those times where we didn't necessarily want to, but we ended up doing it because it was a group decision. Another con of hiking in a group is hitching into town. So if there's this big group of hiker trash standing on the side of the road and you have this one car that's coming by that maybe has room for two people and there's six people with their thumb out, it's really hard to get a hitch. So one of the things that you can actually do is split up and that's what we had to do a lot. So if we were gonna hitch about five miles down into a town, our group would have to split up into twos and then eventually we would have to meet up with each other when we got to town. And I would think probably the biggest con um, would be like having any other family. Eventually you really get to know those people, you start to open up more and you start getting on each other's nerves. You start finding out things about each other that you know you may, might not like, that might annoy you, and you kind of fight just like any other family. You argue, you argue over you know, what towns you're gonna stay in, you argue about miles, um, which is just small and petty, and it's easy to get wrapped up in that stuff, um, but that is a con, you know? Whenever you go out there and you, you first meet people, you kind of want to have this new relationship and as you spend more time with them, it starts becoming like your family at home and you start being a little more open with those people. So that can definitely be a bad thing about hiking with groups. So in 2016, when Snuggles and I returned to the trail to finish our last 600 miles, it was really important for us to kind of have a different type of hike. So even though we were willing to travel a little bit with other people and maybe hang out with people every once in a while, we really wanted to have more of a solo experience. So just me and Snuggles, just us staying in hotels and hostels, not splitting a room with anybody, but just us. Um, so when we went out, you know, we, we had that mindset. And you know, even though we had that mindset, we still ended up hanging out with a handful of people and kind of flip-flopping back and forth with some people that kind of became our new tramway. Another thing is it was really hard for us to imagine connecting that way with anybody else when we went back because it, it kind of felt like we left our tramway in 2015. Those people, you know, like Rube, um, our friend Cider, our friend Hot Sauce, um, we got really close with those people. So it's kind of like it was trapped in this bubble in this kind of time of 2015 and we couldn't imagine having that same connection with people. So some of the pros of hiking solo were obviously flip-flop of the cons of hiking with a group. So Snuggles and I were able to dial back our miles if we wanted to. Uh, if we got up in the morning, we were planning on doing a 20 mile a day and we only got 15 miles in, we were okay with stopping. We didn't have to worry about catching up with somebody else. Uh, if there was a day where we just wanted to push it and do more miles past a shelter, we did it. So that was one of the pros of hiking solo. You know, Snuggles and I aren't necessarily solo, we're a couple, but to us it was hiking solo versus hiking with the group that we did in 2015. And then another pro was, you know, experiencing things just Snuggles and I. I think that 2016, our relationship got a little bit stronger because it was just us leaning on each other versus leaning on some other hikers and connecting with other hikers. Uh, if we had a bad day, it was us talking together. And if I was having a bad day, Snuggles was lifting me up. If she was having a bad day, I was lifting her up. So it kind of allowed us to become a little bit closer. Now I would imagine being solo um, and just going out by yourself you don't have that, that same person to lean upon, so you really have to lean upon yourself. In 2018, I'll be going out to through hike the PCT, and I'll be doing that solo without snuggles. So it's kind of hard for me to imagine not having that person to kind of be there for me and to lean upon and to talk to. So that'll be a really 
interesting experience. And then I think I'll be able to get a little more of a mindset of what it is to hike completely solo. So, you know, like I said, regardless if you want to or not, you will be around other hikers. You might make those bonds and you might not, you might go solo. From my experience, I think that if you're gonna go out there and you're by yourself and you're not with a partner like I was with Snuggles, um, get into a tramway. It was a really great experience. I had some really great times. And you know, that has led to uh, long lasting relationships. I still talk to all of those um, people that were in my tramway and I'm still pretty close to them. We still communicate back and forth on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and we're still close, so it's good to have those lifetime connections. So hopefully that helped kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like to hike solo versus hiking with a group. And you know, make that decision based on the type of hike that you wanna have. If you haven't got a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on, plus some pictures of shakedown hikes for my upcoming section hike of the Continental Divide Trail. Go ahead and like or dislike this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always guys, thanks for watching.